Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from the True Off My Chest subreddit from Constant Nebula 1982 and says, My soon to be ex husband humiliated me on our wedding day and met his karma instantly. It had been two days since my wedding day. I had already been with him for four years, one year of which I was engaged. It all started a few months earlier when I noticed my husband Jake watching prank videos. Oh dear. Among other things, these videos showed embarrassing photos of the bride being played on a projector in front of the whole room or the bride's face being smashed into the cake. I told him straight away that I didn't want anything like that at our wedding. He just laughed and said that he wasn't planning anything like that. I thought that was the end of it, but I kept catching him making strange arrangements with his friends. He suddenly wanted to choose the wedding photographer and the cake. I thought nothing of it and was just glad that he was helping me with the wedding preparations. Nevertheless, I reminded him the day before that if he did something like that, I would break up with him immediately. When the day of the wedding came, Everything went smoothly until the ceremony, until the moment came when the cake was about to be cut. The whole room watched as I made the first cut and the photographer stood in front of us with camera in hand. Suddenly, I felt a hand on the back of my head, pushing me face first into the cake. Not only my makeup, but the whole wedding dress was ruined and the whole room laughed. My husband, the loudest. At that moment, the photographer took the photo and Jake said that this was now our wedding photo. I turned around, slapped him in the face and ran out of the room in tears. Thank God, karma didn't take long to arrive and it came in the form of his own brother. I ran to the toilet and started crying when I suddenly heard loud shouting from the hall. It was his brother, Frank. I could barely understand what he was saying and when I left the toilet, he was waiting for me. He told me that Jake had something to tell me. Jake was shaking and apologized without looking me in the eye. Frank told him to look me in the eye and apologize again. Even I was a bit scared of Frank at that moment because I had always thought of him as a kind and gentle man. I had never seen him angry before. Jake apologized again and then Frank led us back into the hall which was suddenly very quiet and most of our families looked down at the floor a little embarrassed. The festivities were cut short and I was taken home by Frank because I was too angry with my husband and I didn't want to see him. During the ride, Frank apologized for blowing up like that. He explained that my husband was horrible even back when he was a brother and used every special occasion to humiliate Frank. When it was Frank's birthday, my husband would throw his cake at him and break his presents. But back then, their parents always brushed it off by saying, that's just how brothers behave. So he had to endure every humiliation. But when he saw my husband bury my face in the cake, he was fed up because he realized that my husband was just a bad person who got his satisfaction from humiliating others. I asked Frank if he thought it would be an exaggeration if I separated from my husband, and he said no, because according to him, I deserved better, and he didn't care how his brother felt about it because he had brought it on himself. And he told me that if I needed help collecting my things, he would help me and gave me his number. And I decided to separate from him and file for divorce and inform Jake and my family about it. Jake just told me not to do that because it was just a harmless prank. I was spammed by both his family and mine that it would be ridiculous to end our marriage over this. But I see it differently. If he does something like this to me despite multiple requests not to do it, even after promising he wouldn't do it, then I can't trust him. No matter what he promises me, I have to assume that the opposite can and will happen and that he doesn't care how I feel about his decisions. This situation can be projected onto so many much worse situations where it'd be important for me to be able to trust him. His brother Frank seems to be the only one who supports me now, and I will go through with the divorce. Call me humorless, call me what you want, but I have given my reasons. I feel in some ways that this is a pretty simple one in that you told him time and time again, that you told him that if you do this, the relationship is over and he chose to do it. The biggest thing in a relationship is trust. He destroyed that by what he did. But Vegetable Cod says, OP, 
I'm sorry this has happened, but so proud of you. He warned him multiple times and he felt it was more important to get last than be a trustworthy partner. I don't know why people think humiliation is a prank. If you have to explain that it was a joke, it's not funny. Best of luck. P.S. Let Frank know he's a good man and we appreciate him having your back. 101010 Tree says he lied and was disrespectful. Obviously not the things you want in a marriage. Divorcing him will now save you from dealing with more boundaries being broken and the heartache. You deserve better. Another commenter says you told him what the consequences would be. Now he gets to live with that choice. I don't think you have to divorce. If you don't file the marriage certificate within a certain amount of time, you aren't legally married. Just make sure he doesn't file it on your behalf. Susie says, I'm in the UK and don't think we do the smash the cake in the face prank here. If we do, it's a new thing that's come over from the US. I'm certainly not aware of anyone I know going to such a wedding. It's beyond me why anyone thinks it's funny. I think it's very cruel, rude and a waste of a lot of money when you factor in the cost of cake, clothing, hair, makeup, etc. I'd divorce him too. Oh, I just had a little flashback of a video I saw online once of there's this couple that just got married. They're just cutting their cake at the front of everyone, you know, tables all around. Everyone's watching, taking photos and stuff. And then this guy who's absolutely pissed up, drunk, comes up and he just like grabs a big chunk of the cake and starts trying to, I can't remember if he's trying to shove it in their face or, or chuck it at them. And the groom's just like, what the hell? And then floors him. It's like, it's a wild one. But OP did update their post and said, many of you asked for an update, so here it is. Read the original post if you haven't already done that. Many of you pointed out that I could get an annulment. Don't ask me why I didn't think of this earlier, but after you guys pointed it out, I planned on doing that. I haven't done it yet, but it will happen in the next few weeks. It will probably be much more easier than a divorce. With that being said, what happened now? So a day after I wrote the original post, I went to Jake's apartment to get my stuff. I slept over at best friend's house in the meanwhile. Of course, I also took up Frank's offer to help me getting my stuff. When we arrived there, he pleaded with me that it was just a prank and he didn't mean to hurt me. The only thing I could think about is how he broke my trust before and how I couldn't trust him now if he told me he didn't mean to hurt me. When he saw Frank, his face turned red and he yelled at Frank and accused him of poisoning me against him. Don't worry, Jake, you did this yourself. He argued with Frank for a while and Frank confronted him with everything he did to him during his childhood. He told Frank to grow a pair and he should forget about what happened back then. Ironic when he's the one who never changed and is just as bad as before. He constantly tried to talk to me but Frank stood in his way and talked over him. When we left, I saw how he angrily smashed the door. Apparently, he's now spreading lies to his family that Frank tried to steal me from him. Luckily, I was able to see who he really was before it was too late. What a coincidence that after this incident, my family spammed me with messages as well about how we should talk to a therapist instead of breaking up over this. They only stopped when I threatened them to cut them off too. I also didn't plan to share this with you, but so many people suggested it that I thought I could at least ask him. So after we got my stuff, I asked Frank out, but he rejected me telling me that he's already dating someone else. I just wanted to tell you this so you can stop asking. But honestly, I'm also kind of glad this was his answer because it means he didn't just help me because there was a malicious intent behind it, but more because he's simply a good person. Regardless, I told him about my post here and Frank told me he read many of your comments. He said he liked your comments and that you made his day. I thought you might want to know this. This is probably the first and last update of this. I just want to get this behind me and look forward. But thank you for all your support. Edit. If you want to call my story fake because I asked Frank out, feel free. I just acted on what many of you asked me to do and I thought to myself that asking him once doesn't hurt anyone and maybe led to a much healthier relationship if he said yes. I'm not in the best state of mind and will now leave this account. So don't be surprised if I don't respond anymore. My story will stay here and hopefully raise awareness for many people who are in similar situations with toxic partners. No matter if they're male or female, I wish you all the best. And there was a lot of people questioning OP on asking Frank out so soon after what just happened. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story.
And our next story comes from the entitled People subreddit with a bit of work related stuff going on from GG Marie 137 does come with an update as well and says customer demands my personal cell number and blames me for him losing his job. I work as a claims adjuster for auto accidents. A customer filed a claim after hours and I follow up with him first thing this morning. I have no info on the vehicle other than what he reported. And I inform him there is a possibility of it being a total loss. He immediately jumps down my throat and tells me he doesn't want his car to be a total loss. And he doesn't want me to have it moved to another location for an in-person inspection. I start to discuss an alternative with him when he starts cursing at me and berating me, constantly interrupting me, telling me just to pay the claim. If it were that easy of a job, I'd be paid less and my job would be a hell of a lot easier. I explain that per his insurance agreement, we have to inspect the vehicle before I can make a payment for his claim and we need to see if it is going to be a total loss or repairable. He continues to be an ass, so I inform him that I will disconnect the call and try talking to him again when he has regained his composure. I hang up and go into a meeting and he proceeds to call our customer service line over and over and over. He harassed a total of four women and refused to end the call until I accepted his call. I explained I was in a meeting and wouldn't be out for at least another 30 minutes or so. He continued to stay on the line with them for a few more minutes before hanging up and calling customer service again. I finally have a chance to call him back and I explain that we can try to work with his shop in having them submit photos so we can do a preliminary check to at least see if the car is a total loss or not. He tells me he sent me photos from the night before. I explained that there were no attachments to the emails he sent me and that we need very specific photos to have the most accurate review. He proceeds to tell me it's my job to call the shop and request them, which is what I told him at the start of the call anyway. He then demands my cell phone number. I explain that I don't have a work cell phone. He states he wants my cell phone number to be able to reach me over the weekend. I informed him I will not be providing that info to him. He demanded a few more times before stating he wanted to talk with my supervisor. I stated she was already informed of the situation and would be reaching out to him when she is able to. I'm not allowed to give out her contact info. He tells me that I need to have her call him immediately. I remind him that she is my supervisor and I cannot dictate her schedule. He proceeds to try and keep me on the phone until his demands are met. I inform him that I'm going to disconnect the call if there is nothing further to discuss and he ends the call. I called the shop and they also gave me attitude, stating that I was keeping a good man from his job and that I shouldn't be wasting his time like this. I asked if they could email the photos to me just so that I can get it done, and they say they will. I have an uncommon last name, so I made sure to spell it out for them multiple times, since it is part of my email address. Two hours before I leave for the day, I still don't have the photos. I text the customer and let him know, and he told me that he would call them. Five minutes before I'm supposed to leave, I call the shop again and don't get an answer or option to leave a message. I text the customer and let him know that photos aren't received yet and we won't be able to move forward on his claim until Monday. He starts blaming me for working in a different time zone, stating it isn't fair that I work three hours ahead of him. I explain that I don't work three hours ahead of him, I'm just one hour ahead and the shop had all day to send me the photos needed. He now states that since he doesn't have a rental, didn't purchase the coverage, he's going to be fired on Monday, and it's all my fault. I offer to set him up with a discounted rental, and he tells me he doesn't have a rental company in his area, but it's still my fault for him losing his job. Goodness gracious. I'm so sorry to hear that. You mean to tell me your employer is so heartless as to fire you for missing a workday unexpectedly when it's your first occurrence or infraction with them? You may want to contact your state department of labor then. He tells me I should just pay the claim and I'm holding up his claim for no reason to make life difficult for him. I would wonder what he thinks happens to adjusters who don't follow due diligence on a claim and just pay it. We don't get cookies, that's for sure. <laughs> in fact, we face termination with our employer, fines with the state the claim was handled in and possible jail time. Oh yeah, and our employer can sue us for the money we pay to the customer without authorization. If the customer knowingly cashes the check when they know their claim wasn't supposed to be paid out, they get reported to the federal government for insurance fraud and sued by the insurance company for repayment of the claim. I guess I'll see what he has to say on Monday.
My supervisor has been reading my notes and keeping up to date with the claim, and she is going to have a very fun conversation with him, especially when all the calls exhibiting his bad behavior were recorded. ETA, this is a single vehicle accident where the customer hit a large object in the road that he absolutely should have seen. I won't state the specifics in case he's a Redditor. He did not file a police report and he wanted to send me photos from the scene of the accident, which took place at night, and became more irate when I stated I needed a VIN photo from the sticker inside his driver's side door. Update, not too much going on, which is unexpected. It's been radio silence from the customer and I don't trust it. I'm expecting a full blow up. My supervisor called him and left a message yesterday, but he hasn't called her back either. She informed me that I have her encouragement to put him on written only communication. I don't have to answer his calls anymore. She also stated that if he threatens me, which I'm not sure if he will or not, she will get our security team involved. I can press charges against him with his local police as these are recorded calls. I called the shop today and spoke with the owner. I explained how the rep I spoke with on Friday acted very unprofessionally and he informed me that the customer had apparently been calling her non-stop on Friday and harassing her as well because she somehow thought it was a good idea to give him her cell phone number when he demanded it. The owner is an old friend of the customer. You all called it. But he provided this info very freely and stated that after this repair, they aren't friends anymore and he will blacklist him as the rep I spoke with is his niece. I got the photos and there were several very thorough photos. It is pretty minor damage and it is clear that he ran into something on the road. I can't give specifics, but it was a metal object that happened to be laying in the road that got wedged in the undercarriage. It had to pull really hard to get it unstuck and the shop sent me a photo of the very warped item as well. Redditor Sleuths also called that he has a huge custom item that was not on the policy. It's a bed cover for his truck, but there was no damage to it. And even if there was, we wouldn't cover it if he didn't have endorsement for the custom equipment. I ran this SIU, Special Investigations Unit, and while they agreed that the customer was acting shady as hell, they didn't have enough info to start an investigation. And they stated that since it is a single car accident, we would still be obligated to cover his repairs even if he was lying. There are several states where we can deny a claim if the customer lies about how the accident happened, but sadly, this is not one of those states. I've texted the customer to let him know I got photos and that I was in contact with the shop, but he hasn't responded and it's radio silence. Either he's really embarrassed about his actions, as he rightly should be, or he's a ticking time bomb that's going to explode near the end of the week when I'm at my busiest, just to tell me in detail how I made him lose his job. We shall see. This will probably be the last update, but if anything else happens, I'll be sure to let you know. I truly appreciate the support and collective what the fuck from everyone as it confirms I'm not just being crazy or sensitive. For the one poster who told me that it's my job to handle this sort of thing, I've been trained for it. One, I've never been trained for this level of crazy and I challenge you to find anyone short of an orderly at a psych ward to be trained for it. And two, it is my job to get cars fixed, not to deal with harassment and bad behavior. Let this be a reminder to everyone to be kind to others especially the disembodied voices on your phone providing a service to you. And we do have another update to this. And I always think like OP talking at the end there about, you know, talking to someone on the phone, etc., etc. And no matter what, if you're frustrated on the phone, I always make it a point. So this is just coming from my point of view, because I've certainly faced frustration on the phone with with certain places before, you know, when you're getting passed from customer service to customer service, it can be extremely frustrating. I always make a huge point though of being up front with people and saying, look, I'll start off just by telling you that I'm incredibly frustrated right now. I'm not frustrated at you, however, so please do not take this personally. I can remember myself saying that a lot when I, when I was trying to help deal with my dad's illness and was calling around the hospital, getting passed from department to department, trying to get certain medications for him. And it, you know, you spend hours in a day trying to get through to certain people. Incredibly frustrating. And I find most of the time, you know, if you come at people with that sort of attitude and you're like, you're just saying like, I understand that it's not you personally, it, they're a lot more receptive. But OP's update says, I appreciate all the support I've received so far. And I did get a few messages requesting an update. As I expected, the quiet didn't last long and the customer was indeed a ticking time bomb. 
The shop got me the info I needed to complete an estimate for repairs and the owner explained that he expects he most likely will find additional damages that he will contact me for once he knows. He again apologized for his niece's behavior when I called the shop the first time and stated he's no longer friends with a customer. Special Investigations Unit did review the claim and stated that there wasn't enough evidence of fraud, so no dice. I texted the customer to see if he wanted me to issue payment to him or the shop directly. He immediately demanded I call him as he didn't agree to the estimate amount. A bit of info on how auto claims process works for payment. One insurance company creates an initial estimate based on what they can see of the damages. Two insurance pays an initial amount to get the ball rolling. Three the shop and insurance stay in contact so that additional payment can be issued as needed through the process. As the shop finds additional and internal damages that might not have been super apparent initially. Sounds simple enough right? Not for the customer. He starts talking about how the estimate from the shop is 7k and we are paying 6.5k. I let him know that we're happy to work with the shop to issue further payment as needed and explain that shop estimates are based on what they expect to see for the full repairs and insurance pays what they can see and confirm. Not to mention to keep insurance prices down for our customers, we try to negotiate costs with the shop to ensure that what we pay is reasonable. Before I can get two words out, he interrupts me and starts yelling, saying how I lost his job and I'm now denying his claim since I'm refusing to pay the amount the shop demands. I explain again that we aren't denying the claim, but this is the first of multiple payments we'll be issuing, but I need to know where to send the payment. I tell him that if he keeps talking to me like that, I will end the call. His response, of course you will. No self-awareness or apology. Acting like a toddler when he's nearly 40. I continue trying to explain, but he decides to keep talking over me and yelling at me. He starts to say shit about me as a person and my family, and I interrupt and state, do you want to finish that sentence for this recorded line, or who knows how many people to hear? He stops, thinks, and then tells me that he hopes my husband sexually assaults me and leaves me. I recently got married, and IT is in the process of changing my name in the system. So some of my systems show my new name, and some show my maiden name. It causes a lot of confusion, and so I have to explain it a lot while waiting for the updates. I had to explain it to this customer as well, so he knew full well he was saying this to a newlywed. I'll admit, I kind of snapped a bit and left my tour guide Barbie voice behind real quick. I said, sir, during this entire claims process, your own attitude has gotten in the way of your repairs. The way you have acted to me, my co-workers, and the employees at the shop is absolutely deplorable, and you should be ashamed. You haven't said a kind word to me at all and you've been a nightmare to work with. Now you say awful things about my personal life that I explained on Friday was absolutely none of your business when you demanded my cell phone number. And now you insult my husband whom you've never talked to and know nothing about. My husband is 10 times the man you will ever be while being nearly half your age and he knows how to treat people with respect even if he is in a stressful or difficult situation. I feel awful for your wife if this is the type of man she has to deal with at home. At least my husband doesn't have to force me to have sex with him. But it's telling that is where your mind went to. Maybe you should mind your own home before you stick your nose in someone else's. He threw a few more expletives at me, but I ended the call because I just don't get paid enough. He again called my customer service team and made the poor woman cry. I took the call again and explained to him that he was now on written communication with me. He should call the customer service center, but I would never answer his calls again. And I will only respond to his emails or text messages. I then disconnected the line again. I thought that was the end of it, but turns out he still had my supervisor's contact info from when she called on Monday, so he called her up. She called me after she finished on the phone with him, and she gave me a summary. He apparently told her that I accused him of a sexual assault to his wife after he questioned the estimate that I wrote. I don't write estimates, that's our whole other department. He was trying to find out next steps when I ended his call. She had listened to his prior calls, she didn't believe it for a second, she put him on hold while she pulled the call and listened. She then tore him a new asshole for what he said to me. He tried to say that I was worse, but she cut him off and explained that I am one of the adjusters in my unit with the highest metrics from customer reviews. I've had my fair share of angry customers and it takes a lot to make me snap. But she stated that his conduct had pushed me to the point of snapping, which she has never seen. She proceeded to tell him that she is enforcing my written contact only rule with him as she had previously encouraged I do that with him anyway. And she stated that if she hears one more call where it's harassing an employee, she will talk with her supervisor to press charges for harassment. 
Unfortunately, we can't fire him as a customer because he still pays us money. And that the executives don't care how we are treated as long as we get more money. I hope this spurs him to cancel his policy and becomes someone else's problem. I asked if there'd be any disciplinary action against me for the call. She said, call? What call? I don't see any call. And I definitely wouldn't have been able to delete it if the call wasn't recorded. Basically covering my ass if the customer tries to escalate above her to a supervisor or something. I sent a copy of the estimate to the shop and gave them instructions on how they could request more payment from us. And the customer texted to tell me to send payment to them as well. After our call, he called the shop and apparently they had a massive fight because the customer then texted me and said, send payment to me. The shop just pissed me off big time. So I sent the payment to him with his lien holder included, so he has to mail the check to them to endorse and cash before they send him a new check. And of course, it won't be overnighted, but by standard USPS mail both ways. I got him to close the claim, but I still don't think this is the last I'll be hearing from this guy. I provide more updates as they come, but thankfully, I don't have to talk to him again. Thanks again for all the support on this. It's nice to know I'm not crazy or expected to be a doormat. Absolutely fair play to anyone that can deal with any sort of like customer service based role over the phone or face to face or anything like that man i i've never been able i i i dread the day if i ever have to go into a role like that you know there is a lot of absolute bloody assholes out there isn't there one of my previous jobs from uh some years back now when i i worked in the warehouse and i told you that i had to sit in on the customer service part i didn't have to do anything i just had to listen into their phone calls and see what was the, the whole process basically and you basically rotated around the company so you got a little bit of everyone's job so you understood what was going on within the business that was the same job where i told you about like the whip in the sofa and that kind of thing and but listening to some of those phone calls and how rude some people can be is just absolutely mind-blowing i know people uh, can be stressed out you know when like in that particular job, your sofa's got damaged, something's got damaged, you know. It's just, it can be a stressful situation, but to treat someone else, another human, like absolute shit when they're trying to help you, these people were kind. And like the, the phone calls that I listened to, these people were absolutely spot on, lovely people just trying to do their best, not trying to get out of, you know, the insurance claim or whatever, but we're trying to help them in the best way possible. And you hear some of the phone calls and some of the replies, like, just fucking fix it kind of thing. And you think, gee whiz. Anyway, what do you guys make of this situation? Have you ever been in a customer facing role like that? How and faced a customer who was particularly bad to deal with? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, your support, your time, always means the absolute world to me so thank you so so much for being involved truly and hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care and much love